Yeah. Well, I wrote a worksheet um, and I've got a situation and um, as I was writing it um, in the needs section, um, I started to notice maybe deeper thoughts and feelings arise. And it seems like you, you've got a lot of great templates for how, how to maybe flesh out, um, really flesh out the thoughts and like kind of hone in on deeper stuff if, or, or like a, the, the trigger, real trigger, uh, thought. So maybe, um, maybe if that's true, what I just said, you can, you could tell me maybe what template or, or how you would suggest writing maybe before doing a, a full worksheet or, um, uh, yeah, whatever you would suggest based on that. And maybe it would help if I read the worksheet. Um, but. Oh, okay. Well, let, let's, let's do get into the specifics a little bit, but just before we do, um, what I notice when I'm writing a judge your neighbor worksheet is that, um, yeah, it, it, it's like layers get peeled off, you know, like there's the original stressful thoughts. And then there's, it's kind of like the, 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 the tantrum kind of I want, and then there's the shoulds, the advice that's a little bit um, subtler kind of stressful thought. And then the needs are like, are even on a more subtle level. Um, and, and there's a lot of different ways to, to approach those questions, you know, the, the line for I need them too. Um, but what can happen at any point, whether it shows up in the needs or not, is different underlying beliefs can, can pop up or different thoughts can, can pop up. And so in addition to the worksheet itself, I will often just make, start making a list of underlying beliefs right there. Um, like just kind of at the bottom of the worksheet, just be like, uh, it, it's not, it doesn't fit the format. I want them to, or they should, or I need, it's just <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. They are something or other like that, or I need this to do this. I don't know what there's going to be some kind of underlying belief if there's some emotion there and that can be one way to approach it but let's look at your your situation and just kind of see yeah. where you got stuck cool um my situation is i'm sitting this is about a week and a half ago i think it was a saturday sunday sunday i'm sitting on the entryway rug putting on my shoes and I'm at my parents' house, about to, about to go back to my place. Um, I'm putting on my shoes. My niece and nephew are in town visiting. And they're staying with my parents. And um, they, it was just me at the house by myself. They were out doing errands and they're coming back and I hear the garage door open and um, the door is open and my nephew walks through the garage door and he, um, I ask him, my, my niece is, is, um, following after him. I ask like, Hey, how are you guys? And, um, he says like, good. And he just like breezes past me and, um, And I'm, I am like, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm in that moment. I'm annoyed, um, with Wyatt because he breezed past me. Okay. Um, also another question is coming up of if there's multiple emotions, I, I chose not to write that down. I was like, maybe I'll, I'll use that emotion for a different worksheet. Um, yeah, so, multiple emotions can happen, but I know to, I tend to find that, um, yeah, there are many times when I write multiple emotions on my worksheet, but I also have noticed that sometimes 
multiple emotions means I'm actually having multiple thoughts there because yeah. each each thought is giving rise to a different emotion. So I, I tend to think of it as there's a statement of fact, he breezed past me, right? That's just what happened. And then what is my emotional interpretation of him breezing past me? What did that mean when he breezed past me? What was he doing to me when he did that? So what would you say when you, when you think of that? Ignoring me, offending uh, me. Yes. So he's yeah. ignoring me. Um, what was the second one again? Offending. Yeah. Me. Okay. Offending me. Like, yeah. And what does that yeah. mean? Like he's offending me. Like what is he actually doing to you there? What is he? What is your mind saying? Disrespecting yeah. me. Like he's not paying his respects to his elder. Exactly. Um, so yeah. there's like this can this is really good to look at it because it shows the difference of emotion. Like if he's ignoring me, like I may be feeling alienated or left out or sad or something like that. Um, and so that's that emotion. But then if he's disrespecting me, I might be feeling angry because right. he's not, he's not respecting me. So right. different interpretations going on in the same moment can give rise to different emotions and when you see multiple emotions, you can slow it down and look here and see if there are more than one, you know, if there is more than one offense uh, happening. Yeah. And, and then those could be separate worksheets. Like you do a whole worksheet on him ignoring you, get a whole worksheet on him disrespecting you. Same situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, did I hear you say there's the emotion and then there's the interpretation of the emotion and yeah. either one you can do a worksheet you, you can do a worksheet on you can do a worksheet on the emotion itself i tend not to do it as much because it's it's the um <clears throat> emotion is how i react when i believe a thought so i'm kind of doing the work uh, on the symptom rather than on the cause the cause is he doesn't respect me, right? But the emotion is I'm angry. So I could do the work on I'm angry. And it is actually an interesting inquiry. I've done it. Um, but most of the time I'm focused on what did they do that's causing me to feel angry? And then, um, and then everything kind of flows from there. The sadness is a reaction to Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Any like... emotion is a reaction. So I feel sad because he, you know, he didn't include me or something, or he didn't yeah. want to see me. He just, he, he doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> you know, right. Like, right. That's, exactly. Right. So there's my right. whole worksheet on that. I could question I'm sad, but I actually am sad. So it might not be the, the main thing. The, like, if I want to get closer to what's actually bothering me, it's probably whatever he's doing or what I'm interpreting him as doing. In other words, he doesn't like me anymore or he disrespects me. Two totally separate worksheets there. Yeah. I don't mean to keep pulling this apart, but um, well, I guess I do because I have another question. But <laughs> it's like, I, yeah, I'm trying to like the, as I notice myself in this situation, I'm kind of like, what, what's coming first? Um, and maybe this isn't quite accurate, but to me, I'm like, well, it seems like whatever I'm, whatever comes up first, like maybe that does seem like the core thing or the thing to focus on. Like, so sadness. Yeah. He doesn't like me anymore. Oh, to like anger then. Um, and I guess, as you said, both are, are material to use. Both are material, but sometimes one is the main thing. Maybe it's yeah. more about the sadness. He doesn't like yeah. me anymore. And then maybe, ironically, the, 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 the focus on him disrespecting me is even that could be a reaction when I'm feeling yeah. like he doesn't like me anymore. So yeah. I can actually be creating a worksheet on top of a worksheet sort of spontaneously out of reaction. But the main thing is 
could be like you said the first thing that came out which is that he doesn't right. i really feel like he doesn't like me anymore and so right. that that's like you might just only need to work that one and not yeah. even get to the disrespect one like you may never have time for right. it doesn't really matter because right. that's what really was bothering you right i think so in that moment definitely yeah. um yeah and yet i i did write a, wor a worksheet on the anger or the, and the annoying you know the irritation also yeah. fine right the cool <laughs> thing about the work is you don't have to nail it like we're yeah. we're nailing it right now we're like getting we're like really identifying as close as we can what's actually um going on but even if you're in the ballpark like just close enough the work still works that's what that's what yeah. i love about it you don't have to be like a psychologist to be able to like pinpoint precisely what's going on to do the work because the turnarounds the who would you be without the thought all that stuff just works together in this beautiful way that can right. sometimes reveal uh, exactly what you need to see without having to yeah be perfect about right. it right 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 all right so going to your question on the needs, like, did was there something more um, considering we've kind of discussed number one a little bit more, but we're going to the needs. Was there something that that was more specific you wanted to ask me about? Um, well, like the. I need him to recognize me as important so I can feel connected to him like it. it's like. I know it's, it's, um, it, it can be more advantageous to just keep things simple. And, um, as I, as I, again, as I write, it's like, oh, like there's just the layer of like, I want connection. Like I want, I want to feel it's like, a, it's like the deeper stuff. So if I just write, I need him to recognize me. Um, okay <laughs> i could do that right right yeah you know? no, sometimes like all rules are made to be broken right so there's this kind <laughs> of rule that short simple sentences are really good for doing the work because they're easier to hold it's just easier it works really well and i'd say 99 percent of the time that's true but sometimes the statement the longer statement actually says it better for me and it's actually easier for me to hold and so I don't have to throw out what's working for me just to fit a model of like what works 99% of the time. And I like yeah. to feel free if right. that shows up that way. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, and I think my mind <laughs> or the mind, there's just so much, there's so many thoughts that, um, I, I'll do what you suggest of just, um, uh, underlying beliefs and I'll even just start really just writing free and, and not in a worksheet. And then I'll go to a worksheet just to, to feel freer and, and, um, and yet there's still so much that is coming up. So <laughs> like, that's it. That's it. We're okay. identifying stressful thoughts and you never know what you'll find when you start doing that. So yeah. it starts out in one direction and then, oh my God, I just found there's a whole other thing going on here. So I have to respond to that and let that be the what drives me rather than doing it perfectly, getting a worksheet like yeah. just exactly according to protocol. Like, no, the worksheet's there to serve me, not the yeah. other way around. So I'll use the worksheet when the worksheet fits I'll go to one liners if that feels more right, but I'm listening to what's going on inside and I'm trying to just um, express that in whichever way seems most appropriate. Yeah, totally. That's good affirmation. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Great question, really good. And, and I love those emotional interpretations. That's, that's just such a key um concept for me in writing a worksheet and and we go into great detail in this in the work 101 course that i offer where we just really look at the emotional interpretation try to find out what those are um, because it just helps me get closer to what's really bothering me in that situation and the closer i am to that the easier 
it is when I'm doing my work to um, feel like I'm addressing the issue that I'm really feeling at that moment. Yeah. So cool.